When you hear about an animated movie winning Best Animated Feature at the Golden Globes, you're probably picturing some big studio production with an absurd budget and a massive team. A movie called Flow just managed to snatch Best Animated Feature, beating heavy hitters like Inside Out, and get this, it was entirely made in Blender. That's right, no Maya, no Houdini, just Blender. Oh, and they didn't even use cycles for rendering, they just went with Eevee. I've actually heard about Flow before, and I had no clue it was a 100% Blender made, let alone rendered with Eevee. Now that we know, it's given me a whole new perspective on the project. A small team pulled this off using tools literally anyone can access, which is nuts. First of all, Flow is an indie movie. This wasn't Pixar or DreamWorks with unlimited resources, including money and animators. It was made by a small team led by Gens Zilbalotis. If that name rings a bell, he's the guy who made the way. I'm talking about that award-winning animated feature that he basically soloed, but this time he put together a team, admitting that there were just some things he couldn't handle on his own. The story follows a brave cat that lost its home in a massive flood, so it teamed up with a capybara, a lemur, a bird, in addition to a dog to navigate a boat in search of dry land. They all had to rely on trust, courage, and a ton of smarts to survive the new aquatic world. And this is the gist of the movie. Now, going back to the point where I said it was all made with Blender, usually animated films use a bunch of different software. One for modeling, another for animation, other plugins and tools for rendering, and so on. But the team behind Flow decided to stick with Blender for the whole process. It was a bold move, but clearly, it worked. What makes it even crazier is that the team wasn't all in one room. They worked remotely with animators and artists from Latvia, France, and Belgium. And managing a project like this across different countries is actually tough. But Blender really helped make it work smoothly. But to be honest, the shocking thing is the budget. Flow only costs around 3 to 4 million dollars which is incredibly low for a feature-length animated movie spanning around 90 minutes. To put that into perspective, Moana 2 had a budget of $150 million, and Inside Out had $200 million budget. Even an animated movie with a smaller budget, like Transformers 1, still came in at $75 million. And despite the budget gap, Flow still went toe-to-toe -to -toe with these big studio films and came out on top when it comes to rewards and its perception, and it really shows how animation is changing. Most movies start with 2D storyboards but not Flow. The team behind Flow skipped that entirely and dove straight into 3D animatics. They built the sets in Blender and started blocking shots and Gaines did this kind of like a live-action director. He was basically doing location scouting in Blender, experimenting with shots in real time, instead of spending weeks perfecting 2D drawings. And given how visual flow is, I mean no dialogue at all, this approach made a lot of sense. Everything has to be communicated through movement, composition, and cinematography. And they did plan shots in 3D, rather than converting 2D board to layout, which just made things smoother. And because they stuck with Blender the whole way through, the transition from pre-visualization to the final shot was way easier than the usual storyboard to layout to blocking process, which most studios use. And once the animatics were blocked, the team moved to building the assets. The visual style of Flow is deliberate. Instead of going for hyper-realistic environments, they kept things minimal but expressive. The characters, environments, and props were all designed to be stylized but immersive. When it came to rendering, they skipped cycles entirely, which is Blender's path tracing render engine, and they used Eevee instead. Eevee is a real-time render engine, meaning renders happen instantly. While you lose out on things like true ray tracing, global illumination, and reflections, it actually worked better for flow since the film featured a lot of water, so they didn't need ultra-realistic lighting. 
or it was gonna be super expensive and it was gonna take a lot of entering time using cycles. Maybe that's why they went with Eevee. So I believe what they needed most is fast rendering and quick feedback on how the scenes looked, and Eevee gave it to them. Even though they used Blender for everything, they didn't rely on motion capture or AI-assisted animation. Everything was hand-animated, and Gint described the animation style as naturalism rather than realism, or stylized animation for that matter. The movements aren't hyper smooth or perfect, but instead, they feel more intentional, almost like they are carefully crafted. The team studied real animal movements, referencing real footage, to make sure each character had its own unique way of moving, since there is no dialogue and the character's body language, posture, and expressions had to do all the talking. They took the same approach with sound design. Instead of using voice actors for animal noises, they used real animal recordings to keep things grounded. The only exception is the capybara. Turns out, real capybaras have these high-pitched voices, so they ended up using baby camel recordings instead. Why? The baby camel had a calmer, deeper tone that worked better for the character. With the team spread across several countries, it was important to know how to collaborate efficiently and Blender really helped with this, as it allowed everyone to work from the same platform, from modeling to animation to rendering. And the real-time rendering with Eevee was also a big help. Normally, with the remote teams, you have to wait forever to see the results of a render or even a test render, but Eevee allowed for instant feedback, and this made communication and revisions so much easier. Now, let's talk about the animation process itself. The team had a really structured workflow that helped with both efficiency and creativity. And there were four main stages, block A, block B, spline, and polish. In block A, they focused on getting the essential poses and movements down. They didn't worry about transitions yet, just getting the main actions right. And they made sure the character's intentions were clear and that the staging worked with the layout and they set up constraints to guide movements, like making sure the running paths were consistent, and so on. Then Block B came next, where animators refined the actions. They added transitions, detailed movements, and incorporated feedback. They also made sure the style stayed consistent, using the action library for existing animations when needed. Then came the spline phase, and this is where the movement was really refined. Timing, overshoots, and small adjustments, like making sure the eyes and ears moved in a way that felt natural in addition to similar other stuff that were added. And this phase helped keep energy up, essentially for those long shots that could stretch over thousands of frames. Finally, in the polishing phase, they did their final review. The animators checked for any glitches or issues, like penetration problems between characters and made sure everything flowed smoothly. Blender was the main tool throughout all of this, and the asset browser helped the team quickly access and apply animations and poses, keeping everything consistent. And the graph editor and dope sheet were used to manipulate keyframes, and Kitsu helped keep the whole production on track by managing workflows. And thanks to all these tools and super organized approach, the team consisting of 20 animators, which by the way, many of whom were new to Blender, managed to pull off this whole thing in just six months, which is incredible. And it really shows how important communication and adaptability was for getting those long, intricate shots just right. Generally speaking, for anyone who is into animation, flow is a good reminder that you don't need a huge studio or a massive budget to make a high-end animated film. Blender is free. If you can learn it, you can create something that competes with the biggest films in the industry. And flow is a really good example, because it is definitely a step in the right direction. Also, I think it proves that a small, well-organized team of professionals using open source tools can create something that actually can look great, get rewards, and most importantly, it can generate money to keep things going, and it serves as a proof of concept for companies and bigger studios to adapt Blender and use it in their pipelines to make legit films like this one. 
And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.